Hello everyone and thank you so much for tuning in to the 2021 Yorkville Exotic Car Show. Given what's been happening in the world, going virtual was our option for this year and we are so thrilled that you are taking the time to join us. Our presenting sponsor is Bloor Yorkville and our show is in support of the Melanoma Network of Canada. Donations will go toward helping to treat and eradicate one of Canada's most common and preventable cancers that can be fatal. You're currently watching part one of five of our show. In this segment, we're focusing on what the Yorkville Exotic Car Show is known for, exotics and supercars. This exotic segment is brought to you by Kinar Jewelry, specializing in fine watches, jewelry, and accessories. You can find Kinar in Yorkville, Oakville, and Guelph. After the segment, be sure to tune in for our American, Porsche, Open Class, and EV segments starting at 1, 2, 3, and 4 p.m. respectively. For our very first submission, we're going to start things off on a high note with a car that is really impractical for the road. In fact, it's not even road legal. This car is super lightweight and it was designed with a focus on performance with no rules or regulations in mind. Hello to all the fans of the uh, Yorkville Auto Show. My name is Chris Green. I am General Manager for Pagani of Toronto and Brand Manager. Um, not often that we get to you know, get an opportunity to see a Pagani, let alone a Zonda R, which you can probably get a little sneak peek of right behind me here. But uh, my job ultimately today is to give you guys a little bit of the insight with regards to the Pagani Zonda R, this one, the Zonda R Liquid, as well as uh, some more facts about Pagani here in Canada, uh, as we at FAF represent the brand here um, coast to coast. Zonda R Liquid. Liquid being um, true to the customer's desire and vision of what he wanted this car to become. So not only was there only 15 Zonda R's created globally, this was chassis number 11. The customer had a, had a deeper vision, wanted to um, continue with the theme of the Zonda R going into the evolution and then to the Revoluzione. So this car now actually carries a lot of the features of the Revoluzione, again with that taste and the, and the vision of the customer that owns this, uh, this vehicle in particular. So a lot of people know the Zonda R as being the fastest production race car, or the fastest race car to go around uh, the Nürburgring dating back to 2012, I believe it was, 2011, 2012, where they did a lap time of six minutes and 47 seconds on the famous Green Hell Circuit. Um, the, rumored lap time of the Zonda R Revolutione, which is a lot of what this car now um, carries, was rumored to be even 15 seconds faster than that, which is just incredible. For a car that you look at, built purely out of carbon fiber, carbo titanium chassis, and of course, every element about the car was built with no limits. There was no restriction, there was no government ruling. It was Horatio Pagani and his engineering team that went to the greatest depths to find every ounce of performance possible out of the car itself, uh, from the lightweight carbon ceramic brakes to, of course, the car in itself, as I mentioned earlier, being built out of carbon titanium. The great thing about this car in particular, and that I've, I've been fortunate to drive, I had the opportunity to drive this car at one of uh, Pagani's Redunos. A Reduno is their global rally, where they get owners from around the world to ship their cars out to various locations globally and not only drive their car on track, but drive their cars through the mountains of Tuscany or through the mountains in, um, uh, in Japan where I had the opportunity to drive this actual car uh, before it went for its, its next stage of life into the uh, Zonda R Liquid. Um, with that being said, this car is weighs less than a Mazda Miata, weighing in at only 2,340 pounds, I believe it is, and having the horsepower of just pushing over 800 horsepower as a matter of fact. Naturally aspirated V12, arguably the greatest sounding engine of all time. Um, this Carrera GT are very, very close to me, but just that nas naturally aspirated V12 pumping out from the uh, six liter engine is just remarkable. As we come across the side of this car, of course, this is a Zonda, the only Zonda in Canada. Yes, it's a race car, but it was never road legal. Um, the Zonda was never road legal for the North American market. So. I believe that this was one of the first cars Zonda-wise to come to the country and I think that there's only three across North America, two uh, Zonda R's 
and, um, and then of course the liquid here in Canada. So this being the only Zonda in Canada is very special to be able to have the customer allow us to, to show you guys this car today and uh, he's of course very excited and passionate about it as well. So as we kind of continue on towards the front of the car again this whole front clamshell opens up a lot of exposure of the carbon fiber that you guys are going to get some nice beautiful detailed shots of. Of course the very um, classic Zonda style mirror which gives you a beautiful vision of outside of the car especially when you're sitting in the driver's seat. Some of the features on the Evoluzione which were introduced into the Zonda R Liquid are the canards here on the front of the car. Um, of course to help generate additional downforce uh, compared to the Zonda R in the past. And the you know the iconic Pagani headlights uh, just the beautiful, beautiful work of art in general. I mean, some really special details on the inside of the car that I'm going to be able to uh, point out as well. Everybody loves a good roof scoop. You need this to feed that V12, the AMG V12 hiding in the back here. And of course, the car is designed, um, not only sculptured like a work of art, but it's, it's engineered and the technology that's been introduced into these cars is just um, uh, very unique to Pagani and uh, and with the release or the most recent announcement of the Wyra R, so the equivalent of this from the Wyra model range, um, we still have a very, you know, I still have a soft spot for the for the Zonda, but I can't wait to see what that Wyra R is going to represent. Again, being uh, V12 naturally aspirated and maybe one of the last ones you'll ever see from uh, AMG and Pagani. So as I open up and I'm kind of sitting here on the on the sill of the door, uh, just kind of showing you guys a little bit about the inside and again what's special about this car. Um, you know, I do want to point out, of course, the mo the much uh, the much needed Big Mac window, as I call it. Very very little air coming into the vehicle, although this one is equipped with air conditioning. Um, you know, the car was never homologated to race in a, in a series in particular. Although it does have an FIA rated uh, roll bar integrated into the entire chassis uh, for safety. Safety is our number one priority, of course, when the owners are taking a vehicle of this caliper and the ability that this car can truly represent. You always want to ensure that the driver in, in it is as safe as possible. Uh, you're going to start to see some of the features, including the dash. Uh, the dash where you get your telemetry, you get your um, water temperature, you get your oil temperature. I mean, everything that you need as a driver. Uh, to give you to, to receive the feedback of what the car is, is offering. Uh, very, very advanced traction control and ABS system, highly sophisticated um, and, and again bespoke to this car. So something that Horatio and his engineering team worked closely with AMG and Bosch to, um, to, to finesse essentially in this vehicle. Uh, another really neat feature on the car is that the, the owner of the vehicle always wanted to have a better understanding of what was around him. So we've actually introduced a, um, a traffic navigation system in the vehicle. So a lot like a American Le Mans car, or what we now, now call an IMSA car, or a prototype car that races at Le Mans, you can actually see the traffic approaching you from behind and it's gonna highlight what's up and coming and it's gonna start flashing in different sequences depending upon if the car's coming fast uh, on fast approach or if you're pulling away from a car and just notifying you of what's in your surrounding area. So that screen is gonna be parked on the right hand side of the dash. Um, again, I believe it's the only Zonda to, to have this integrated and just a beautiful feature. The owner also wanted to do a very bespoke seat so this is a combination of a variety of, um, of Zonda R and Zonda Revo and he just really wanted to find something that was suitable for him, his size, as well as uh, his level of comfort. So the seats have been uh, completed by Pagani once again, fully, fully bespoke in, his, in the same livery, the same style as the previous, um, previous configuration. However, etched in the top of the seat, it will have the, uh, the new famous logo for Liquid, which is what we call this car. Um, of course, the pedal box is exactly like you'd expect from a Zonda. A beautiful uh, work of art, everything machined out of a single block of aluminum. And again, when you get closer to the inside, you can actually see the titanium weave inside the carbon chassis. It almost looks like a bling, it's like jewelry. You see this beautiful mesh within the carbon fiber uh, from inside the car. The excitement, the emotion that you get from the roof scoop sitting just above your head, you can hear that air being pulled in especially under full throttle and um, when, you know, when you're starting to make your, make your way through the gears. In 20 nanoseconds, this will change gears on a single clutch. Uh, it's quite impressive to see what X-Track uh, have produced in terms of a transmission, six speed. And the transmission itself is actually built by the same company that build uh, gearboxes for Formula One cars, as well as our road cars. Um, X-Track are based in the UK and arguably the best in the business. So of course it was a natural fit for Pagani.
So here we are, uh, the business end of the beast. This is the uh, this is the exciting part. This is where all the 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 noise and the, the excitement of this V12 engine comes out. Unfortunately, um, we're lacking a tool here today to be able to open the rear engine bay. But hopefully, we can get you some some shots of what that really looks like. Um, but as we do get a little bit closer here, of course, you're going to see the ceramic coated exhaust system, the infamous uh, four pot exhaust of Pagani. Um, and there's Zonda, as well as of course being carried over to the Wyra. Um, there's a lot of things happening back here. Everything for performance, of course, where you get, you know, this massive table of a wing. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it generates in terms of downforce, but I believe it's, it's almost the equivalent of the weight of the car, or not too far from it. Another upgrade from the uh, Revolutione was the secondary wing. Uh, that we introduced onto the um, onto the Zonda liquid and um, what I call the shark fin uh, on the tail end of the the engine cover here. So as you take a closer look in the back of the vehicle, I mean you can see that everything is very purpose built. Um, you know you can get right in there and you can see the exhaust. You can see the way the beautiful exhaust system has been channeled. I mean to say it's a work of art, and I keep on coming back to that. It truly, truly is the level of engineering and. And, and attention to detail on this car is just um, out of this world compared to a lot of the vehicles you see. This would be your rain light that you have flashing, also a pit speed limiter light just to indicate that um, the car is in pit lane. On the left side of that, you're gonna have your box, which is the Bosch camera, which helps you with the navigation of those cars that are coming up behind you. And of course, the whole area is just open, as open as possible to help evacuate a lot of the heat being generated by this 6 liter V12. Looking back at the tail of the car, very, very Pagani, very Zonda, low center of gravity, low, um, low tail, and it just continues to really uh, demonstrate the, the mastery and the design and the art that Horatio and his vision and the team have, uh, have, have created here. The multi-million dollar question, what's next? What can we expect to see here in Canada from Pagani? Uh, you may or may not have just recently heard, and I mentioned it before, but the Waira R. So the next variant of the race cars and the track focus cars for our customers uh, will be coming. We do have one coming to Canada as well. I'm not exactly sure on what the date's going to be, but I figure within the next two years we should anticipate to see that car. Um, and I'd love to be able to see them side by side. I mean, of course, to have both of them over at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park or any great track that we have here in Canada would be... Uh, would be something magical and an experience that would definitely be one that I wouldn't uh, easily forget. So we're looking forward to the Wyra R. Um, we've you know, recently seen some uh, Wyra Roadsters and of course the Wyra Roadster BC that was recently delivered to our great customer at OB Prestige Auto, Olivier Ben Lulu out in Quebec. Uh, again, completely finished in this beautiful Oro Rosso, uh, Rosa, sorry, uh, which is a rose gold carbon fiber a stunning tartan interior and just a very unique car that we can have here and experience in Canada. We've been the representative of the brand uh, importer since 2012 and to think that uh, you know we have these cars finally starting to land here and just such a bespoke car and such a rare piece to be able to see and experience let alone in Canada but in general uh, we're very proud of and uh, we love working with the factory. We love having the relationship with Horatio and his team and of course as the brand continues to grow and develop we're just very fortunate to be part of it and uh, hopefully share our passion and excitement with you guys as well. So ultimately all of us at FAF uh, and here at Pagani of Toronto want to wish you a very happy Father's Day. Enjoy the weekend and I really hope that you enjoyed the experience here and seeing this, uh, this Zonda R today. Liquid. That was an amazing look at the Zonda R. You might already know Chris since he started his career with FAF as a professional driver for FAF Motorsports. It's clear that he has a passion for motorsports and the brand that he represents. It was really cool to see all the features that make the Zonda R so track ready. And of course, thank you to FAF for supporting our event this year and also playing a big part in our virtual event in 2020 as well. So we saw the latest in automotive innovation just now, but let's go back in time for a look at one classy convertible from the 90s. Behind me is a beautiful 1995 Ferrari 355. The owner, Frank, has been a supporter of the Yorkville Exotic Car Show for over five years now, so it was about time that we took a moment to share a little bit more about him, his story, and of course, his vehicle. up in 
Italy and as a child he always dreamt of owning a Ferrari. He always thought that it was a dream that he would never achieve, yet later in life he found this car through a private sale and as he says, the rest is history. Frank chose this car for several reasons. Firstly, he loves the body styling and I mean who wouldn't? There are no bad lines with this car, it is so beautiful and sleek and elegant. The red paint color really shows that off and it's the perfect complement to its tan leather interior. That color combination is so iconic for a Ferrari, yet it never seems to get old. Frank also loves his car because he says it is a blast to drive. It has the perfect combination of power and fun. He also says it's the kind of car that anyone can get behind the wheel of and instantly enjoy. This 355 is equipped with a 3.5 liter V8 that sounds incredible and it gives the car so much character. <laughs> One thing that was a must for Frank was the manual gearbox. If you're an enthusiast like him, you know just how important it is to feel connected to your car and to feel like you have ultimate control when you're behind the wheel. And so what's interesting is that the 355 presented fixes for issues that had plagued Ferrari for years. This is where we're going to get a little bit technical, so try and follow along. So for example, Ferrari's metal gated gearboxes have traditionally been bulky when cold but the 355 introduced a coolant heat exchanger that warmed the gearbox oil faster. Motronic engine management also helped this car run more smoothly from a cold start, and precise rod-driven shifter actuation replaced the 348, which was the 355's predecessor, cable-operated system. The 355 also added new hydraulic power steering, which made driving this car a lot easier. Frank's mechanic is a huge fan of this car, and he said that the Ferrari 355 might be the most livable Ferrari yet for daily driving. Frank has and always will love Ferrari. He does have other unique cars in his collection too, and they are, of course, all Italian. He has a vintage 1970 Fiat 500 with the rag top and no seat belts. That one gets quite a bit of attention when it's on the road. He also is the original owner of a 1979 Fiat Spider. And most recently, he added a 2011 Maserati Quattroporte to his collection because, of course, the Ferrari engine. Thank you, Frank, for being a supporter of the Yorkville Exotic Car Show year after year. We love that you're willing to share your passion of cars with the community, all in support of charity. Stay tuned to our social media channels because we'll be announcing all of our events there first. And we really hope that next year you'll be able to see Frank's 355 in person. What a beautiful story and a beautiful car. The summertime is perfect for cruising in a convertible like that, but it's also important to be mindful of UV ray exposure. Did you know that one in every three cancers diagnosed is skin cancer? Sunburn increases your risk of melanoma skin cancer and can occur in just 15 minutes of sun exposure. Fortunately, skin cancer is preventable and if caught early, there is an 85% survival rate. Be sure to wear SPF 50 sunscreen and cover up with sunglasses, a hat, or UV protective clothing for your next drive. We're now going to move on to our next submission. Frank's car was super analog, but if you like the latest in tech, check this out. There's no doubt about it, this luxury Grand Tourer is a head turner. This 2017 Mercedes AMG GTS is owned by a new participant of the Yorkville Exotic Car Show. His name is Adil and he's in real estate sales. He's always wanted to participate in the show, but he never had the opportunity to. So this year we are so thrilled that we finally have the opportunity to feature his car. So let's get right into what makes this car special. The 2017 Mercedes AMG GTS has a 4 liter bi-turbo V8. But what makes that even more unique is the fact that only one person oversees the entire build of the engine from start to finish. And their name is actually put on a plaque on the engine. That V8 makes 503 horsepower and 479 pound feet of torque. 0 to 60 is in about 3.7 seconds. And fun fact the engine is actually arranged in a hot V design so that the turbo can sit on top of the engine block. And that's supposed to help reduce turbo lag. So yes, the GTS is so powerful, it's fast, and it sounds incredible. But let's take a moment now to talk about styling because I think this design is stunning. One of the first things that you'll notice about the GTS is just how long the hood is. And you might be wondering, 
is this car challenging to drive because of the size? Well, I actually had the opportunity to drive a GCC several years ago, and I do have to say that once you actually get into the cabin, you really feel like it's wrapping around you. So Adil's GTS is in solar beam yellow, and I think it is an incredible color. Had I bought this car, I would absolutely have opted for the upgrade for this paint color. What's actually funny is that he wasn't sure if he wanted a flashy paint job, and he actually had plans to wrap it. That is until he found out that the previous owner paid about $10,000 for this upgraded paint job, but I think he made a great decision in keeping it. I do also think that Adil has gotten used to the attention that this car always gets on the road. He actually shared a funny story with us where he was driving by a daycare and all of the kids were stuck to the fence like magnets just watching the car drive by. And I think that he has gotten used to that attention and he's turned this into an opportunity to share his love of cars with the community. Adil has always loved AMGs and prior to this he had a CLA 45 Edition 1 as well as an E63S. So we definitely have a Benz enthusiast here. He has not modded this car just yet, but his plans to upgrade the turbos, do the intake, and install a downpipe so you can really hear that V8 scream. Adil, thank you so much for participating in this year's Yorkville Exotic Car Show, and we hope to see you at next year's event. We're so excited we're able to take the car show virtual again this year. We've been doing the show for 10 years now, this year raising funds for the Melanoma Network of Canada. It's truly an incredible Father's Day event in our city. We started on Cumberland Street and Yorkville Avenue in the first year with approximately 3,000 people in attendance and then moved to Bloor Street for Celebrate Bloor in 2011 with the first introduction of the red carpet that marked the turning point in our monumental success. Within the past few years, we're now an estimated 100,000 people. Bloor Street sets the perfect stage for a spectacular showcase of over 110 exotic vehicles every year. The red carpet is a great draw, and the event falling on Father's Day, the public really enjoys celebrating with family and friends at this one-of-a-kind event. Select vehicles will also be on display this Father's Day at both Yorkville Village and the Colonnade. You can stop by to see the Porsche 2020 Taycan Turbo and cars from Grand Touring Automobiles if you're in the neighborhood. The Bloor Yorkville BIA is excited to be working with our new charitable partner and event beneficiary, Melanoma Network of Canada. And now, let's get back to the exotic cars. Hi guys, my name is Steven Sun, a real estate broker with uh, Remax in Toronto. And I'm very delighted to uh, share with you uh, my passion with cars. And this is uh, one of the vehicles that I own. It's a 2018 McLaren 570S Spider, and I will have to say it's probably one of my favorite cars that I've ever owned. This color is called Ventura Orange, and if you look closely, it has a lot of sparkle underneath the orange paint. And now orange is the McLaren corporate color, and I just love orange cars. It was always my dream to own in an orange car, and I'm so happy, so happy that I was able to uh, get this version. Other than that, um, it's got a lot of carbon inside, um, but not a lot of carbon on the outside, um, which is fine, which is why I was able to wrap the whole car. With the press of the button, we can put the top up. Before buying this car, I've owned other, several other sports cars as well. My very first sports car uh, was a Mercedes, uh, I think it was a 20, uh, 2007 um, CLK 63 uh, convertible. So was, that was my first convertible and ever since then I fell in love with uh, having open top, having the connection with the open air. Um, the driving experience is, is completely different. Um, you feel a lot more connected with the environment um, and it's just great to feel the wind in the hair. So after the uh, Mercedes, I went to a Porsche 911. Um, the model was 997.2 uh, C4S uh, cab. 
so it was another my second convertible um, and that um, that car was a manual as well uh, so it's it's a car that I still regret selling um, but I had a chance to buy the 991 GT3 RS so when that chance came along I traded in the 997 C4S cap uh, to get the uh, 911 uh, GT3 RS I've also owned a Lamborghini it was a 2010 Lamborghini uh, Gallardo Superleggera. Uh, so it was like a lighter track version of the Gallardo. And um, it was a Yeager, uh, but fantastic car. Um, very, very raw. Um, so comparing to a lot of these cars, the McLaren 570S is it's a lot more easier to live with. Uh, performance wise, it's a lot quicker and I would say in the modern day cars McLaren has kept a lot of the old school mechanical um, uh, feature or feeling that are missing from the modern day supercars. Uh, a lot of the modern day supercars tend to be a lot of computer driven um, and they they have a lot of trick suspensions um, trying to hold the car planted on the roll but you feel a little bit of disconnect um, for the 570s McLaren stayed with uh, electro, uh, electromechanical um, steering so not full electric steering that way you still retain a lot of the roll feel um, as opposed to a lot of manufacturer going with full electric steering and as far as the suspension goes, uh, it's a double wishbone suspension, uh, very track oriented, um, but it doesn't have the um, uh, hydro, um, hydro mechanical steering, uh, sorry, suspension of the uh, 720S. So this is more traditional um, with, uh, with uh, springs and damper. That way, when you're driving the 570S, um, you really feel the roll and it does have uh, adjustable suspension as well for the dampering so you can you can if, it, if the roll gets a little bit more bumpy uh, you can definitely dial it down and make it a lot smoother so there you have it this is my 2018 570s mclaren 570s spider and uh, i'm so happy to be able to share with you i wish all of you a happy father's day um, come to think of it, I got this car back in May, June 2018. So I would have to say this was my Father's Day present to myself uh, back in 2018. And uh, I'm still in love with it. I don't intend to part with it anytime soon. Um, but anyways, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful Father's Day and uh, I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you to Steven for taking the time out of his busy schedule to give us a look at his gorgeous McLaren. As a realtor, his days can be pretty busy and on top of that, he's also a father to two young girls and we hope that they will one day share his love for cars. Now our show has always been family friendly so we wanted to take a small break right now to show you a little something from the Paddock Motor Club in Burlington. How's it going guys? Sean here at the Paddock Motor Club and I have a treat for you today. This is a 250 California Spider made by a company called Harrington's. And this is an actual working car. You can get in, it starts, it drives. Um, you have adjustable pedals for adults. You know what I mean? It's got a steering wheel, sequential gearbox. It works, you know what I mean? Everything works great. You can drive on the track with this. It's not really for road use, but I would say it's pretty cool to drive around and bomb around it. In the standard tune, the cars can reach around 50 kilometers an hour, 47. A speed restrictor can be fitted for younger drivers. Uh, the car uses approximately around a liter and a half of petrol per hour. Uh, max RPM is 8,500 RPM, and idle speed is around 1,500. In terms of other specs, you got Brembo brakes on the front, calipers uh, slotted for extra cooling. You have a 110 cc air-cooled four-stroke single-cylinder petrol engine, and like I said before, a three-speed semi-automatic sequential transmission, no clutch, reverse gear as well included. Fully independent suspension all around, double wishbones at the front, single at the rear. It has adjustable gas shock absorbers all around, 
vented discs with dual pot Brembo calipers, front and rear. So once again, guys, we are at the Paddock Motor Club. I am in the Harrington 250 California Spider. I mean, I think it's a cool car. It's something I would drive home in, and it's something I would spend a whole Saturday and vomit around in the track. I think it'd be awesome. I was not joking when I said we were going to have a look at a little something. Thank you to Paddock Motor Club for your support of the Yorkville Exotic Car Show. Next up, we have another McLaren 570S. It was such a pleasure working with Jordana Goldlist on her submission. Jordana's submission has already helped to raise a substantial donation for the Melanoma Network of Canada. So while you enjoy this next clip, head on over to yecs.crowdchange.ca to donate on behalf of your favorite car in the show. At the end of the day, we're going to announce which cars have contributed the most. The top fundraiser will win a prize pack for their patio valued at over $2,000. In this video for the Yorkville Exotic Car Show, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. First, I'll be talking about some of the finer details on this beautiful 2019 McLaren 570S, and then we're going to invite the drive around camera to talk about her experience in owning this gorgeous sports car. The McLaren 570 is from McLaren's Sport Series, and the big appeal with a car like this is that it's super lightweight, but it also has exceptional power, handling, and performance. Everything that you would expect from a McLaren, but this one is a little bit more road friendly especially in comparison to something like the 765 LT, for example. This 570S is in Burton Blue. It is an amazing color with a lot of depth. That means it stands out on the road. That is, if you see it first. Chances are you're going to hear this coming before you actually see it. The 570S is a mid-engine sports car. It is powered by a 3.8 liter V8 that sends power to the rear wheels via a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission. That V8 makes 570 horsepower and 600 pound-feet of torque, and it can get from zero to 100 in just 3.1 seconds. Convertibles can typically be quite heavy because when you cut off the top of the car, you have to reinforce the chassis to make up for what's been lost up top. However, the 570S has been constructed with a lot of carbon fiber, so no additional reinforcements were actually needed because the body of the car is already so strong and so rigid. When you open up the butterfly doors, you'll be greeted with a jaw-dropping interior with gray and orange accents. Jordana clearly has amazing taste in cars, but now it's time to get her on camera to hear a little bit more about her story. Hi everyone, my name is Jordana Goldlist. I'm the owner of JHG Criminal Law, and I'm really excited to be a part of the 2021 Yorkville Exotic Car Show. I was introduced to the car show through a friend of mine who works for the Melanoma Network of Canada. I'm really excited to be helping out this charity this year and doing some good while enjoying a car show. Delivery day was amazing. I picked up this car on my 40th birthday. So I got some McLaren. They had balloons everywhere spelling out happy 40th in the same colors as the McLaren. So the color scheme for my happy birthday balloons was this blue with orange. There was a bottle of champagne waiting for us. Uh, it really, McLaren did an amazing job of making the entire day celebratory in nature. So, when I decided to treat myself to turning 40 um, and buy you know, a, a supercar, I, I went and looked at different options at different dealerships and, and different makes and models. And when I decided on the 570, uh, I think there was four different options available for me. There was the Burton Blue, there was a Black, there was a Grey, and there was a White. And the Blue just popped. It just stands out. And at the end of the day, when you're buying a car of this caliber, uh, really, I wanted something that wasn't going to blend into everything else on the road, and most certainly this one doesn't. I mean, it's it's the simple things, like opening the car door. If you don't know how, it's a little rubber button that's at the bottom of, of the side of the door. Uh, locking the door. It took me months to figure out how to lock it without pushing the button on the key because it's sort of this hidden button uh, underneath the side of the car. Um, you know, getting used to all of the buttons inside. It's not the kind of car that you just turn on and drive. There's so many different features and options for performance that, you know, it just takes time to get used to. But at the end of the day, I, I absolutely love it. My favorite memory of the car is the day that I picked it up. Um, because I was picking it up on my birthday, I went first thing in the morning, got the car, and immediately went to show my mom, who had never seen it. And I pull up and she comes outside of her apartment and jaw just dropped. 
Um, I opened the door for her because opening up doors on McLaren's are not the easiest task. And so she sits in and she fumbled for a minute before she actually was seated properly. And I didn't know what she was doing, but I waited, obviously. She sits down, puts her feet down, and I realized that she's taking her shoes off in order to not dirty my car with her shoes. And uh, she spent the entire ride driving barefoot so she didn't get my car dirty on the first day. Thank you for watching. I've been in the automotive industry for a number of years and I've been able to see how exponentially inclusive it has become. It's really amazing to see how female automotive enthusiasts participate in our event and we hope to see more of that when we gather on the red carpet on Bloor Street, hopefully in 2022. The Yorkville Exotic Car Show team along with Bloor Yorkville and the Melanoma Network of Canada will always offer an event that appeals to enthusiasts but is also diverse and inclusive too. Up next is one of my personal favorites. I could actually say that about all the cars in the show, but I am especially fond of this automaker. The driver of this car has chosen to remain anonymous and let the car speak for itself. So without further ado, please enjoy. How's it going guys? I'm Sean, I'm here at FAF Reserve, and we are here looking at the beautiful Lamborghini Diablo SE30. Let's jump into it. The 90s was an amazing time for car enthusiasts. Some of the world's best cars were produced in that decade, and many icons were made during that time as well. One such time, or one such icon, is the Lamborghini Diablo. In this video, we're not just focusing on the original Diablo, but today we're talking about the Diablo SE30. So a little bit of history on this Lamborghini. All Lamborghinis are named after bulls, and it's no different in this case. Diablo is the name of a championship bull, and it also means devil in Spanish. The Diablo SE30 is a limited production special edition model that celebrates Lamborghini's 30 years in business. Only 150 units were ever produced and only about 25 were made in North America. You're looking at number 9 of 150. So Lamborghinis have always been iconic with their wedge shape and scissor doors. But what makes the SE30 even more special is the unique viola paint color. Introduced with the SE30, the exterior just differs a little bit slightly from the other Diablos in its more race-inspired and exclusive. So only a handful of SE30s feature the Jota race kit, designed to make this weapon even more track ready. It's crazy to think that Ferruzio Lamborghini went from building tractors to one day making cars that rival automobiles made by people like Enzo Ferrari, the F40. I've heard the SE30 is Lamborghini's response to the F40. Whether it is or it isn't, it's a solid adversary. This is so performance focused with plenty of weight saving modifications in mind when this was developed. So in terms of performance, these wheels are made from a lightweight magnesium material and were exclusively built by OZ Racing. The Diablo SE30 originally came with Pirelli P0 tires. In addition to the lightweight tires, there's a lot of carbon fiber everywhere in the car. It also includes four point racing harnesses for that extra race feel. The power windows are replaced with plexiglass. They have a little smaller piece here that opens when you're gasping for air from driving this car. The Diablo SE30 is more powerful than a regular Diablo with a 5.7 liter V12. Small details like the firing order written on the engine, which is really cool, makes this car feel really special. That V12 makes 525 horsepower, 40 more horsepower than the regular Diablo and 428 pounds feet of torque at around 5,200 RPM. The Diablo's top speed is 330 kilometers an hour. The Diablo was such a statement from Lamborghini, it was the first Lambo to break the 200 mile per hour barrier. So mid-engined rear wheel drive car, it has a five speed manual transmission featuring a beautiful gated shifter. So this car has many SE specific parts that make it more track ready. It also has adjustable anti-roll bars that can be controlled in car on the go. This car is track ready, fire extinguisher and all, it's ready to go. So the interior on this vehicle has a lot of blue Alcantara. It's incredible, but it actually wasn't a standard option for the SE30 in North America. They were originally equipped with leather in North America, while the European counterparts had Alcantara. The first owner, who was based in Beverly Hills, preferred the Alcantara. So when he ordered the car, he ordered the materials from the factory, and when he took delivery, he had it installed himself. 
In the cabin of this car, you'll notice a few other details that have made this special car even more special. There's a flat bottom steering wheel for easier entry, the four point race harnesses we mentioned earlier, obviously, and in the center you have buttons to control the sway bars and suspension, just like we talked about earlier. So this is one very special and unique supercar. It's something that really should belong in a museum. Lamborghini featured some really cool weight saving features and design in this car. Things like the wheels, driver adjustable suspension buttons, this is something that auto manufacturers are doing now and Lambo was doing them 28 years ago. The design is a mark of the 80s and 90s culture and style. I love the way cars used to be designed. Really brash and loud, exaggerated. It's really a classic Lamborghini look. This car is the essence of a Lamborghini. We now have one more vehicle to share with you and we're going to end our segment one of five on a high note. So this emission also comes from Faf McLaren and it features a car that bears little resemblance to a lot of the cars that you're going to see today and that it's surprisingly easy to get into. Keep watching to see what I'm talking about. Hi everyone, my name is Mark Basili from McLaren Toronto, McLaren sales executive and I'm here today to talk to you about the all new McLaren Elva. So this car is very unique, it's part of McLaren's Ultimate Series which is our top tier category of hypercar uh, and obviously this one is even more unique because it's obviously missing something that we see on most cars. There is no windscreen on the Elva, so it's much like almost driving a speedboat down the highway. Um, the difference is with this Elva and compared to actually any other windshieldless car like an SP2 or SP1 Monza or the Aston Martin Speedster they're coming out with is we've developed a way to actually have you sit comfortably uh, in the car without being blasted uh, with the air as you travel down the road. And we've done that through basically this system right here. We call it an active air management system. And what it does is it actually takes the air from the front nose here and it turns it up, which comes through these vents here. And then there's another deployable spoiler, which is this little thin piece in the front that also raises up its speed. And what that does is it creates an artificial air bubble over the top of the car. So it's sending all that air over the top and behind your heads, giving you what they call the cone of silence up to around 70 miles an hour. Um, beyond that, there's not much that can be done. Uh, the car does weigh less than 1,200 kilograms. and has over 800 horsepower. So it's pretty manic when you do drive it at speed, um, but a surreal experience to say the least. Um, I've been very fortunate to have driven this car a few times um, and it's blowing me away. It's the fastest car I've ever driven, yet it's comfortable and drivable, which I think is something that kind of sums up McLaren's DNA, is all of our cars have performance. That's a, that's a must, we all know that's part of McLaren, but the comfortability and the drivability is something that we don't see in cars like this. Uh, and having experienced it firsthand, I can tell you that it is a very comfortable car. Um, another thing you probably noticed about the car is, is the body panels. And I don't know if you can see it from where you're looking at there, but very few body panels on this car. This entire front clamshell, all the way to the opposite fender, is all one piece, all the way down here. Then you have the two doors on either side, and you have this big swooping side skirt that comes all the way up and meets the rear quarter panel and all the way to the active air brake in the rear. So thanks to the use of less paneling and all the paneling made from carbon fiber, we've really shed a lot of weight on this car. Um, thanks to those properties and obviously removing the roof as well as the windscreen on it. Um, some other great details about this car is the exhaust system. Uh, and if you want to follow me around the back of the car, I'll show you what that looks like. So as you see back here, we actually have four tailpipes, uh, two pointed towards the rear of the car and two kind of pointed up on an angle. Uh, they call this the Nirvana exhaust. And what we've learned through engineering is that as you put two pipes closer together, it creates, it creates a higher pitch sound. And as you separate those pipes further apart from each other, it creates a lower pitch sound. So basically the exhaust note leaving behind the car here is a low note is what everyone else is gonna hear. But if from inside the car, you're actually gonna hear the high pitch note. So if you've seen any reviews of in-car driving on the track, it has a very high-pitched soundtrack to it that as you hear it pull away from you uh, from a camera outside the vehicle, it has a really deep, robust V8 uh, growl to it. So really, really cool. Um, it does make a difference compared to most of our cars. And again, you can see it's made its cutaway here. Um, 
before the active air brake. And the active air brake on the Elva actually goes straight from uh, driver side fender to passenger side fender, and it's pretty deep. So you can imagine as this car is driving at the limit and at speed, and that spoiler is articulating itself, it's giving you ample downforce. And in a car like this, we don't have a lot of areas to create downforce. Um, obviously, we have a lot of kind of very little paneling to the car. Um, the, air, the active air management system in the front is not to create downforce, but to create the dome or the cone of silence over you when you're driving. So what we do for downforce in the Elva, it's all ground effects. So underneath the floor, it's a solid floor. Um, there's no brakes in it, so nice, clean airflow underneath. And then what we do is we actually create the downforce by how it kind of meets uh, the rear end of the car, as well as kind of the scoops in the front. Um, and that's actually something I'd like to show you on the, on the doors itself, is how they've hidden a lot of the aerodynamics inside. So basically, as the air flows over the front fender of the car, you can see the way that the panels have been built is to actually channel that air directly into this little porthole or scoop. And then what it actually does, is you're probably wondering, where does it go? It actually travels right through the door, so I can actually stick my whole hand right in here. And then it travels right through here and into the, uh, the rear bodywork of the car. And that's actually channeling air not only to cool some properties in the engine, but to help push the rear end down as well. Um, the side intakes here are not the intakes for the, um, the engine or the air intake. It's actually an intake to cool the high temp radiators on the vehicle as well. So you can see, very functional build car, but sculpted like it's, it looks very artsy, yet it's fully functional. And that's the thing I love about McLaren is they've done a great way of uh, blending the lines of basically design, but with functionality as well. Um, and I, I can honestly say that I think it's the best brand out there that's kind of incorporated those two strategies into their design. Now on the interior, you can see it, it's really no separation from the exterior. It literally just bleeds into the interior. And that was the idea of the Elva. Um, they really wanted you to feel completely exposed. Um, actually, the way that they describe it is they want you to feel like you're skydiving from the behind the wheel of your McLaren. Uh, and it exactly feels like that. Um, but to obviously make a car like this more usable and functional, there needs to be some design changes. Uh, one of those design changes to make the entry or ingress and egress from the car to be easier is if you look at the base of the seat, the base of the seat is actually much shorter than what you're used to in a standard car. So most of the time you have it, the base of the seat kind of come to the bottom of your knee, uh, provide you with kind of good upper leg support. But this car here, if you look, it kind of only goes up just kind of halfway up your thigh. Um, and the reason for that is they actually want you to be able to step inside the car. So I'll show you how you can do that. And that is something you would not be able to do in a regular car. And again, to get out, same sort of idea. Now, you don't lose any comfortability uh, because of that. It's actually feels very ergonomic. Um, and it does allow a lot more room inside the cabin. Um, much like the Artura with our interior, we have our controls for handling and power chain changes right at our fingertips. So unlike the other cars, you have to take your hand off the wheel and turn a switch. You're actually doing it right here. So you can just give the handling mode a change by using that, or you can use your right hand and make powertrain changes. So this tonneau cover here is actually the only other panel than the doors that does open. Uh, and the reason for it is obviously we need to access some fluid reservoirs for the engine, the fuel cell. Um, so your fuel filler cap is right here on the driver's side. And then we also have our coolant reservoirs over here. Oil is on the other side, but we have this nice recessed area right in here. And obviously with a windshieldless car, you would hope it comes with helmets and it does come with bespoke helmets. So you're able to store one helmet for a passenger in that nice little cubby hole there. And obviously, you know, wear your helmet while you're driving the car. It's also beautiful too. I mean, I love the way they've designed it with these two little portholes into the engine bay. It's just gorgeous. I wanted to thank all of you for spending some time with myself, McLaren Toronto, and specifically the awesome McLaren Elva. And I wish you guys all a happy Father's Day. I love what Mark said about the Elva's design. McLaren wanted it to feel like you were skydiving from behind the wheel. Isn't that the feeling that all enthusiasts want? It's a bittersweet moment now as we've reached the end of our first segment for the Yorkville Exotic Car Show presented by Bloor Yorkville in support of the Melanoma Network of Canada. We also wanted to thank our sponsor for this segment, Canard Jewelry. Tune in at 1 p.m. for our American segment. In recent years, we've seen an uptick in requests for domestics, so if you're a fan of Chevrolet and Ford and Dodge, just to name a few, check back for that video because we have a lot in store for you.